Hello there, in this video today we're going to see what happens when we connect up various things to the new PlayStation Portal. I'm wondering, will Ethernet cable work just like you can with the Nintendo Switch? Then maybe it's not going to stutter so much during gameplay. What happens if we connect up a keyboard? Will it work? I've got loads of different things here to try, so let's get started on the video and let's see what happens when. So the first thing I want to try out is whether Ethernet will work or not, because then this would stop the dropouts, because right now my PlayStation 5 is connected up via Ethernet and it always works perfectly. So if I can get this connected up via Ethernet, then I won't have to rely on the Wi-Fi signal. So I've got USB-C to USB-A little adapter, and then I've got a Ugreen Ethernet adapter here. So RJ45 in, USB-A out, and a cable connected into it. Watch this, when I plug it into my Nintendo Switch, it does work. The Wi-Fi will start disconnecting. You can see the lights are on here already. And bit by bit, it will come up here as a wired connection. There you go, it's come up already. So you can see there that we've got a wired connection and the lights are on here. Let's see if the lights come on on the PlayStation Portal because then we wouldn't have to worry about it dropping out so often. Right, annoyingly, there's no lights coming on. So it's not detecting it at all. Let's go into here, go to settings and go to network, set up network, internet connection, and it's not coming up at all. Well, I'm just gonna go to scan networks, just in case it comes up with a wired connection. No, there's no wired connection there whatsoever, and the lights are not on, so that's the biggest telltale there, that the lights are not on. So annoyingly, ethernet connection will not work going in here. Well, that's a real shame. What I now want to try is, I want to try if this USB headset, this is a Corsair one, whether this will have any life. Now the PlayStation Portal does have a little headphone jack at the bottom here, but I want to see what happens via USB. First of all, I'm going to plug it into the Nintendo Switch. I haven't done it on this one here, just to see if it does get recognized or not. Right, so you can see it gives it power, but it's not actually working. But when I do this here, it's, uh, it is actually lowering down the volume when I do here. So there's some life in it, but it's not actually working as a headset. Let's see what happens when I plug it into here, whether there's any life at all. Right, it doesn't affect the mute there. No, it's completely dead. That says to me that this USB isn't giving out any power whatsoever, which is a real shame. I'm just gonna try a keyboard. And I'm just gonna go up to search and see if I can actually type anything in. No, what a shame. So it's not making any difference whatsoever. So basically that says to me that the USB-C port at the bottom is only ever going to be used for charging unless they're going to change something via software. It doesn't make, uh, there's, there's no power coming out of it to power anything whatsoever. Just give this Titan adapter here a try, just in case we can use another controller on here. So if I plug this into the Nintendo Switch, automatically it will come to life. You see we've got, uh, we've got power here, yeah? You can see the blue light. But when we plug it into here, I bet it does nothing. No, no blue light at all. Put it in the other way around. No, there's absolutely nothing. Right, so that says to me that nothing is gonna work via the USB-C, which is a real, real shame. I wonder what would happen if we did USB-C to USB-C from the switch to here. Is something gonna blow up or is it gonna be recognized? Right, it's coming up as charging here. Well, that's interesting. So on the Nintendo Switch, it doesn't do anything, but yet this is coming up as charging. If you have a look up here, you can see the little symbol there. So if I unplug it, the green lightning bolt goes away. And if I plug it back in, it will come back. There you go. 
just here hopefully you can see that so yeah that sort of proves that the playstation portal with usb isn't actually doing anything it can only accept a charge while the nintendo switch can accept a charge and it can also output via it as well because remember it's going to be output to the dock from here i will try i'll tell you what let's plug in a little portable dock into here and let's see if it will accept a charge through here now, will it work through here? Yeah, so it still accepts a charge through the dock. That's interesting. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's get a TV down. Let's see if we can dock this to a TV. So I'm gonna get HDMI out of here into a TV. And let's see if it comes up with anything or will it just be no signal. Let's put it to HDMI 2. Because normally on a phone and stuff, it will dock without even power going into it. So let's see now, is anything going to happen? It's still charging, but there's nothing happening up on screen. <laughs> yeah, so you can't, I was just wondering whether it could dock through. It'd be nice if it could output the signal onto another TV. Completely pointless, but interesting. Yeah, so it's not doing anything. It's still charging, but it's not accepting, uh, it's not accepting any output. Let's do it with an uh, Apple dock I'll do it without power and then with power no it's not even coming up with no signal that's not even disappearing so it's not recognizing anything it's completely dead plug it in is it gonna charge no so it doesn't charge through here when it's coming from the uh, Nintendo switch Right, okay. Interesting. So, unfortunately, it looks like not much can be done with this because nothing's going to work via the USB-C output, which is, uh, which is a shame. Right, let's get rid of the TV, and I want to... Uh, I know it's not going to work on Bluetooth because this hasn't got any Bluetooth capability, but let's see if I was to get a Bluetooth dongle into the headphone jack, will I be able to connect it up to this big JBL speaker here? And if I can connect it up to that speaker, then I'm going to try the Sony headphones there. First of all, I'm just going to plug in some normal headphones into it. These have got a microphone built in there from my Samsung phone. Let's see. Okay, so they're definitely recognized. Can I change the volume from here? Yes, I can. So headphones are working. I can change the volume here which is good. I want to know if the microphone's working because right now the microphone's muted here. Uh, let me unmute it and let's see if, go to PlayStation, let's go down to microphone down here and see if we can adjust the sound. Adjust mic level. So first of all it's going to be, uh, that's interesting, so now that I've got it off mute here can you see it's not actually working because it's coming through here but yet it's not working here either. So it really is just a headphone jack. It's not a four pole headphone jack. You know, with these ones here, you have four connections on left and right audio, and then it also works with a microphone. So you can see now that it's picking up my voice here. Yeah, if I was to mute it, then it says it's muted. So that works like it should do. But when you plug in a, a, a headset into here, it's not gonna work with the microphone. You can see now that the microphone stopped working, even though this mic here is on. So yeah, you can adjust the volume on here, but it doesn't work for the microphone. So that's interesting to know that that there at the back is just a headphone jack, not a microphone port as well. Right, okay. Let's plug in one of these. This is a little 3.5 millimeter jack to Bluetooth. So uh, let's turn it on. And I'm gonna put it into pairing mode. I've got it to transmit rather than receive. Right, it's going red and blue now. Let's plug this into here. And let's turn on the JBL speaker. Right, let's see if it's gonna pair up. There we go, it's paired up. Right, okay. Now, Interestingly, hold on one second, it's still picking up my voice here, even though this is plugged in. Ah, because this here is just a normal, it's not four pole, it's just a three pole. So it's not, uh, it's just, you know, left and right audio. So that's good, it hasn't got rid of the microphone from it. Right, so you can actually use this now, you can see mute 
and unmute, you can use this while you've got, for example, a Bluetooth speaker connected to it. So let's go to here. And let's have a listen. Let's get some volume on here. There we go. That's coming through here now. Right, okay, so if it works on that, let's try to get the headphones here working. So I'm going to hold it down, and then that should put, turn it on and put it into pairing mode. Right, that's in pairing mode. Let's see if it picks each other up. I think they're connected. Hopefully you'll be able to hear something if I hold it up to the mic. And if I hold this one up. But remember, we're only gonna be able to control the volume from here to here and also here as well, because this thinks there's just a, a, a normal uh, headphones plugged into it. So when we do the volume here, it would be probably best to put this one on max and then control the volume from here. So it's interesting that you can get these to work. Now, another thing, in case you're curious, of course you can charge it up from a USB power bank. You might also be interested to know how much it uh, draws. Well, let's have a look. So right now this is like half full and it's drawing, it's five volts at uh, 1.2 amps. So uh, yeah, that's it there. So you can plug it into a power bank. You don't have to rely on just a battery in here. So yeah, that's quite disappointing. Nothing like this is gonna work, you see, this USB thing here. Let's just try, just try this one because the USB doesn't give it any power whatsoever. So this is a little USB sound card. And if I plug it in there, No, all the sounds coming through the speakers again, so it doesn't recognize anything from the USB-C, which is a real, real shame. Right, let me show you the glitches that I think uh, are a bit, of a bit of an oversight. Right, okay, so I'm back on the controller here now, and you might be aware that the mute button doesn't just mute and unmute the microphone. If you hold it down, it will actually mute the TV. So it's a nice quick way if you've got a phone call to just mute the TV and then hold it down again to unmute the TV. When we mute it here, it comes up with like a slow pulsing orange light to show that it's been muted. Now let's say if you've done that and you've forgotten to unmute it, you now go onto here, this microphone will not work anymore, which is quite interesting. So I'm gonna reconnect now because this here you see will only allow us to mute and unmute. It doesn't allow you to mute the TV because this is the TV and I suppose they thought you might as well just mute it from here if you want to do it. Right now, if I was to do this here, you can see that the light will go off and on, but it's not actually working because if we were to work our way down to the microphone at the bottom here, you will see that there's a, a line through it. It says, all audio is muted, yet I'm not muted. You can see here, I'm not muted. If I press that, I'm muted. But can you see, it's not making any difference at all. It doesn't uh, recognize the microphone at all. To prove this to you, I'm gonna go into Astro's Playroom, and I'm gonna go to the controller demo. Right, so if you have a look here, you can see that the mute light is on here, yet the mute light is not on here. If I put the mute on here, it makes no difference here, yeah? unmute it from here and yet it doesn't recognize any voice at all. So basically the microphone has now been blocked on this because the TV was muted on here. Yeah, but luckily there is a way to get out of this. All we have to do is hit the PlayStation button and then if we go down to mic down here and then if we go turn off muting, it will then all go back to normal. You can actually hear my TV has started to work again and now if I go back to the game, you can see, one second, you can see now, testing, 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 it is now working. And also if I hit the mute button here, can you see that the light's on here? Hit the mute button again, and the light's off. But it's an interesting glitch 
and not everybody would know that you've got to go into the microphone part there to fix it. Right, so I think that's quite interesting, that little glitch there with the mute button. I'm pretty sure maybe in a, another update that Sony will probably release it where this button here will work just like this one. So where we mute, unmute, and then hold it down to mute the TV. That then would get rid of this problem here as well. A few other things that may be interesting to know is that... Um, it's just lost a connection, <laughs> is that it doesn't go into pairing mode. I was wondering, could you use this on your phone, for example? Normally on the DualSense, if you hold down this button here and this button for about four or five seconds, it will start strobing and it will go into pairing mode. So this is now discoverable. If you were to connect it to your phone, you would see it will come up. Yep. I don't know if you can see it in the studio lights, but I can see the blue lights here flashing. It doesn't work on here. If I hit this button here and this button here, I can't see anything strobing. Unless, of course, there's a different combination that I don't know but there's nothing happening there. Also, I tried turning it on and hitting down various combinations of buttons to see if there was a hidden menu, but there wasn't. So I did volume up, volume down, both of them, both of them with PlayStation button, just a PlayStation button, and nothing happened. I'm sure there is a, a combination of buttons you can do to get into the menu, but uh, you know, same way you can do on a phone, but uh, I couldn't do it on this one here. So if you've got anything interesting, put it down in the comments below. If you know any weird combinations, any weird glitches, it'll be interesting to read for me and other people. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. In this instance, what happens when you connect up various different things to the PlayStation Portal? The answer is not very much, but at least now you don't have to do it yourself because I've shown you that it doesn't do anything through the USB-C port apart from charging. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching.